Hello, welcome to episode 33 of Salt Air. My name is Tom Hatch. I'm the creator of Salt. And today we're going to talk about the latest release of Salt Open. We just came out with this release and we're excited. Lots of new features, lots of functionality, and we've hit a number of great milestones when it comes to contributors and size of the community. I have with me today Megan and Kavya from the SALT team. Can I ask you two to introduce yourselves? Yeah, so uh, my name is Megan Wilhite, and I'm currently a software engineer at SALT Stack, and I've been heavily invested in helping with the release suite as well, as particularly this release. Hi, I'm Kavya Chandrasekhar. I'm a product manager at, for the Open uh, SALT Stack team. Thank you, Megan and Kavya. So I want to start by talking about some of the community milestones that we hit here. We've had more contributors in this release than we have in the past. We passed 3,000 total contributors to SALT and hit our 100,000th commit to the project. Overall, SALT continues to be a massive community. And we have so many people who are out in the wild using SALT for so many different things. And it's been really exciting to see the contributions continue to roll in at a pace that continues to grow year over year. Now, before we dive directly into the release, for some of our viewers, I want to cover the full SALT ecosystem really quickly so that we know what we're talking about when we talk about SALT's software releases, as opposed to some of the other pieces of software that we distribute as a company. When we come back and we look at SALT, that really is the red box that you're seeing on the screen here. SALT itself is at the agent and agentless control over devices, as well as the SALT master. And so what we're looking at here is the fact that that open source foundation is what everything that we produce here at SALT Stack is built on top of. Without it, we wouldn't really exist. And so above SALT is where our enterprise components exist. The operations framework and the command and control center is where we have our new security products and our more advanced role-based access control systems, as well as a much more robust API that allows you to interact with SALT at even greater scale than you can from an open perspective. And so we're going to be zoning in on many of these core open pieces of functionality today. Now, the open source software is where our configuration management engine is, our event-based management system, and all of our different operating system support components exist. Some of the things also that we're excited about in this release have to do with advances in our agentless technology and more functionality around what we can do with SALT's event bus and beacon system. But for this SALT Air, we're going to be focusing on a few key aspects. Of, of the release. There's a lot we're not going to talk about. This is a big release, but we do want to focus on a few core things. Now, moving forward, I want to pass the time over to Kavya, who's going to give us a few more highlights about the fluorine release of SALT. So let's look at uh, some of the exciting uh, details about the fluorine release. So these numbers, they tell a powerful story of how our SALT community members, I mean, they're, they've been working hard in driving uh, SALT ahead. Um, so this uh, 300 plus community members were uh, very pivotal in submitting more than 1,000 PRs or pull requests. There were also about 967 mergers and 216 bug fixes. So when Tom was talking about how big of a release this is, these numbers uh, prove the point. We would also like to take some time to thank our community members, uh, especially the, these three who've made a significant and impactful contribution to SALT and have also had a positive influence to the community. Uh, Cedric, Mircha, and Michael. We also have our top 15 contributors list uh, to the SALT repo, which, is, which will be coming up uh, in our uh, Florine release blog, uh, and the link will be shared along with this video. And uh, now I'd like uh, Megan to talk about some of the exciting features for the Florine release. All right, yeah, so uh, there was a lot that happened in the Florine release, particularly in terms of NetOps. Um, there was more than what I'm going to speak to, but here are some of the emphasized uh, features that were added. 
There was a NetBox execution module that was added in the previous release, but there is currently now more features added. And there is also a NetBox external pillar. There is also the uh, NetMiko multi-vendor library, which is now integrated in SALT. And you can use it via the NetMiko proxy module or directly via the SALT menu. Um, we also have added support for a couple of new switches. There was the uh, Cisco switch. Uh, there, which you can previously already support, but it was previously supported via SSH methods, and you can now support. But it's now supported via the uh, NX API. Um, and now there is also support for the Arista uh, switches via a proxy module as well. Um, and in terms of chat ops, there is the Google Hangouts module, uh, and so we can uh, you can now use the execution module to interact with Google Hangouts. Um, let's bring it over to you, Tom, to speak to a customer uh, case story. Thanks, Megan. Um, I, I have to chuckle. You were saying beforehand that uh, you knew your dog would start bark barking as soon as you were up. So uh, Can you hear it then? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that's that's, that's all fine. <laughs> that's fantastic, actually. Well, <laughs> So let me talk a little bit about our work that we've had with IBM Cloud. So IBM Cloud has been one of our biggest customers around our network operations and network automation. IBM has been working closely with us as we have continued to build out and develop all of these network uh, management interfaces that we've been adding into the latest release of SALT. And this has been a really exciting thing for us. IBM came to us and chose SALT over other network automation solutions in the industry, primarily because they felt that SALT, I shouldn't say felt that, but proved that SALT was able to operate at significantly higher speeds and higher scale than any other tool inside of uh, network operations and maintenance. They came back and said that even if they were using other tools, they felt that SALT would literally shave years of work off of that team and enable them to have up-to-date, compliant, and secure configurations and patches on all of these network devices. And so this has been a very exciting customer case to be working with. We have a webinar that goes over what we've done with IBM in much more detail, but I want to give them a shout out and also a big thanks to IBM for their involvement in this release, as well as their involvement with SaltStack over the last few years. Now I want to hand the time back over to Megan, uh, if you can talk a little bit about some of the other release, uh, sorry, some of the other features that we have in this release. Okay, great. Yeah, so um, some of the uh, integrations added into SALT. Uh, one was Ansible. This was previously supported uh, to interact with Ansible, but now we are uh, adding the ability to interact with playbooks in both state and execution modules. Um, there was also a SALT SSH Terraform roster that was added, and this is going to allow uh, users to uh, interact with their hosts, provision them with both SALT SSH and Terraform. Uh, another great feature that was added was the Docker proxy minion. Um, so essentially containers can be treated as minions without SALT actually being installed. And what is going on underneath is Docker call. Docker.call is calling these execution modules. It can run state SLS, apply, high state. Uh, and so that's another great feature. Um, and yeah, that's what, all I have in terms of all of the release highlights. Uh, as you'll hear, there's more in the release notes. Um, back to you, Tom. Thanks, Megan. Yeah, we're really excited to see this deeper integration with Ansible and the ability to work directly with Ansible playbooks. One of the things that, go, going back to the beginning of SALT, is I was less concerned with us becoming the dominant config language. That's a language war. I'm more concerned with the fact that SALT is an automation engine and an event-driven system, which allows you to do very powerful things. And even though SALT has its own configuration management and cloud management systems, we want to be able to integrate deeply with other players. And so our ability to work with Ansible on a much deeper level is something that we're really excited about and something that our users have been asking for. The ability to use SALT speed and scale, but apply that to configuration management 
and systems management languages and interfaces that it just didn't have before. And so this is something that, again, we're just really excited about. Now, I want to thank everybody for not only watching this episode of Salt Air, I want to thank uh, Megan and Kavya for coming on here, but I also want to thank our community and all the work that they've done to continue to deliver fantastic releases of Salt and continue to give us and everybody around us some absolutely fantastic software to work with. We at SaltStack are really excited about the future, about the new features, not only that we are releasing in our open source products, but also our enterprise products as we're developing something which continues to deepen our footprint in the world and continues to allow infrastructures to stay up to date and dynamic and be fully automated. Thanks.